Today's video is all about crowd pleasers, and I've got 20 fragrances here on this list in the top 20 list. So if you want to find out all about these crowd pleasers, stick around. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. So let's go ahead and get started right away since this is going to be a longer than normal video. Top 20 crowd pleasers. I've got designers, I've got niche, I've got cheap, and I've got expensive fragrances all together. But all of these are great crowd pleasers. They smell great. People love them. People come to me and say what you're wearing. Of course, they're compliment getters as well. But really, the crowd around really loves the way these smell. So, Right away, at number 20, I'm finally loving this. It's Sauvage EDP. So the first one was a little too strong for me. It was just a little overwhelming. But this new one, I'm really enjoying. And I do have people telling me that I smell great. So uh, compliments do come in. And general consensus is that people love the way this smells on me. So it's a crowd pleaser. But I have it at the bottom because it's not one of my favorite, favorite smells, you know, if that makes sense. It's, it's a decent smell, and I like the whole licorice -y thing in here. Slight bit licorice -y. But there are a lot better fragrances than this one. But I did want to put it in the list, and I'm enjoying it. It's Sauvage by Dior EDP at number 20. Another crowd pleaser is a classic fragrance that was relaunched a few years ago. This is Green Water. This is definitely a crowd pleaser. People tend to love this one on me. And the general consensus is people really love the way it smells. They compliment me and say, you smell great. But it is a classic fragrance after all, but it's all about citruses here. And uh, it's just a combo of great citruses with vetiver, mint, things like that. So it's a given that this is the kind of fragrance that people tend to like smelling on me and turn out to be crowd pleasers. So if you don't know it, do check it out. Green Water by Jacques Fat is at number 19. So at number 18, we're going to the House of Creed, which we have two Creed fragrances here, and that is Virgin Island Water. So this one's a total crowd pleaser. Everybody seems to love the way this smells, especially the fact that it's got the coconut and the lime. People always go, go gaga over that kind of a smell. Kind of transports people to like an island setting, perhaps. I think that's what it is. But at, at the same time, it's also very cozy and comfy. I really like wearing this one. And I'm, I'm, this is kind of fragrance that actually kind of gets me into enjoying aquatics. It's sort of like slight bit aquatic. And I like the way it smells. And people tend to really love the way it smells on me, too. So it's definitely a crowd pleaser. And that's at number 18. Another crowd pleaser from the house of Atelier Cologne is... Bergamot Soleil. So this one is a total compliment getter and a crowd pleaser. People just love the way this smells. I don't know what it is about this one, but the effervescent vibe the Bergamot gives. It's shiny, glistening, just sparkling. Juicy, beautiful smell, and just people tend to just go gaga over the way this smells. And I really love the way it smells because it's like ultra shiny, sparkly uh, Bergamot. And so it's almost like the name Soleil. So Bergamot Soleil, the sun, and so you, you've got this like sun shining on this Bergamot and you can almost feel the, the juiciness of that Bergamot kind of like ripening in the sun. So that's how it wears too. It's just a juicy, juicy, sweetened uh, Bergamot that I absolutely love and people tend to love it on me as well. So Bergamot Soleil, at number 17 by Atelier Cologne. At number 16, going to the house of Penhaligans is Beolea. Now this one's a modern fougere with lemongrass and citrusy notes. It also has lavender, so it just has a little bit of that fougere-like quality to it. Um, but um, it's not quite like, you know, um, a, a typical barbershop or fougere fragrance with tonka bean and things like that. But it is totally a crowd pleaser. It smells great, perfect in the warm weather as well. And uh, people tend to love it on me. And I actually love the way it smells on me too. There's also this underlying creaminess to it that kind of makes it cozy and comfy as well. So a unique smell from um, Penhaligans. It's Beolea at number 16. Do check it out. Going to the house of Orloff Paris. This is Sea of Light, this one right here. Now this one's a total, total crowd pleaser. People tend to just love the way this one smells. Just the consensus from everyone that I've asked is that it smells great. I think it's because it's got this like slight bit fruitiness and it also has this muskiness, but it's a very, uh, bright, shiny, uh, uplifting citrus uh, slash musk kind of a fragrance. And also kind of hints at things like um, Aqua Universalis Forte uh, from uh, MFK. So it's kind of like in that ballpark, but really, really beautiful. Uh, shame this brand is not 
doing more to kind of promote their brand because I, I love their fragrances, but this one's really lovely. And, and the general consensus with people is this is one that they like smelling on me. So uh, I love wearing it and it's perfect in the heat as well. So this is Sea of Light from Orlot Paris at number 15. At number 14, going to the house of Anique Coutal. This is Eau de Missio, this one right here. So this one came out probably around 2014, I think. This is their second Eau de Missio. They had one back uh, quite a long time ago and they discontinued it. So this one came out, uh, like I said, about 2014. And this is actually kind of hit around the same ballpark as things like Green Water, perhaps Eau Sauvage from uh, Dior and things like that. So if you like this sort of thing, uh, this is one that you're going to enjoy. It also kind of hints a little bit at um, Eau de Adrienne from Anique Coutal, this brand. So it's in that same ballpark at citruses and uh, woody notes and herbal notes. It's quite, quite pleasant. And the people just tend to love this one on me. And it's just a perfect crowd pleaser. Uh, just something that you can wear and you know not be offensive to anyone and uh, smell great and enjoy your fragrance. So do check it out. Eau de Missio by Anique Goutal, and that's at number 14. Number 13, we're going to the house of Mugler, and this is from their Les Exceptions collection. This is Hot Cologne. So this is kind of like their fragrance called Cologne, the Mugler fragrance, the famous Mugler, Terry Mugler fragrance. But this one actually has an added coffee note. So it's a bit spicy, or I don't know, I guess spicy. I guess I get that from the, the coffee. It's not quite a spice, but still comes off a bit spicy, but a true crowd pleaser. Just absolute uh, love for this one and people around me tend to really love the way it smells. And it's the kind of fragrance that you would wear and not be offending anyone with your loud cologne or fragrance or perfume or whatever. Just a general uh, positive consensus with everyone. And if you don't know it, do check it out. It's unique with the coffee note. They're very, very unique. So it's got that traditional, traditional eau de cologne then you got that coffee. The coffee pops through after you spray the, the uh, fragrance and you, you smell the, like that traditional eau de cologne like the smell. So it's very, very unique and I love that about it and people love it as well. So hot cologne at number 13 from Mugler. Speaking of Eau Sauvage, we've got Eau Sauvage here at number 12. And the reason this is a crowd pleaser is because it is non-offensive. It is smelling awesome. It smells classic, but not dated. Um, just an overall love appreciated by everyone kind of a fragrance. It's classy, it's masculine, it's from a designer, you can find deals on this one and it's an everyday kind of scent. People tend to love this kind of scent. It's a bit of a citruses, a bit of herbs, a bit of vetiver and you've got a masterpiece here from the House of Dior that's been around for uh, over 50 years. So this is Dior Eau Sauvage, not Sauvage and this is at number 12. Another crowd pleaser that I think everyone seems to love on me is Bergamot 22 from Le Labo. Um, this one's all about beautiful, juicy, but slightly tart Bergamot, whereas we had the sweeter Bergamot here. In here, it's a little tart, more tart, and a little more crisp, and then a little more mouth puckering because you can kind of smell the, the tartness, but oh, beautiful. And people really love the way this smells on me. Absolutely go gaga over it. And I think I go gaga over the way it smells as well. But just compliments. And this is a kind of fragrance you would wear when you're going around crowds. You don't know if they're going to be, you know, sensitive to fragrances or things like that. And generally the consensus with this one is that they all love it. It just smells beautiful and juicy. Perfect scent. So this is Bergamot 22 by Le Labo, and that's at number 11. At number 10, we're going to the house of Byredo, and this is Balda Afrique. This one right here. Um, this is all about vetiver with marigold, just a beautiful concoction. It's also a bit uh, bright and shiny, so it's like vetiver can be weighty and heavy and dark, but here we got a very, very uplifting kind of a happy vetiver. Totally unisex, although I've heard some men say it's a bit on the feminine side, which I don't think so, but you might want to test it on your own. But it's a beautiful scent and a crowd pleaser. People just tend to love this one on me and a compliment getter as well. This is the kind of friend, this is the kind of fragrance that's non-offensive that you can wear in offices and things like that. So if you don't know Val d'Afrique and you love vetiver, a different kind of vetiver, not your traditional dark and inky vetiver, try Val d'Afrique from Byredo. That's at number 10. Okay, we're going to the house of uh, eccentric molecules. This is molecule one. Yes, I love this fragrance. Yes, it gets compliments. Yes, it's easy to wear. Yes, it's a crowd pleaser. And it's niche, but not overly expensive. Just a 
all around great fragrance and you can also use it as a layering. It could be a base for some certain types of fragrances and people tend to love the way this smells. Compliments galore. If you don't know Molecule One, you have to check it out. It's one of the most unique creations ever. That's at number nine. Lately, I've been wearing a lot of another 13 from Le Labo. That's at number eight. And the crowd seems to love, the crowd seems to love this one. Um, this is unique. It's amber, ambroxan, not ambergris. And so it's got this unique woodiness, but still a bit fruity and uh, citrusy as well at the same time. But a total crowd pleaser. People tend to love this one. And it's very, very easy to wear. It's non-offensive. Still, people, you know, compliment that you're wearing something very unique that smells pleasant but not of offensive and then also the unique thing about this fragrance is it goes away and then comes back when you're wearing it just have the greatest unique most unique fragrance uh, wearing experience so if you don't know another 13 from Le Labo do check it out that's at number eight going to the house of ether this is citrus ester this is kind of like a similar house to eccentric molecules where they use uh, all synthetic molecules to create fragrances and I love this one, it gets so many compliments and it's a crowd pleaser, people tend to love it, it's non-offensive. And this is the citrusy version of their one of their scents. They have multiple different styles, uh, kind of like eccentric molecules, and the smell is just gorgeous. Really, really beautiful citrusy and a uh, long-lasting synthetic, but unique fragrance from Ether. Do check it out. This is Citrus Ester at number seven. And that's a, that's a total crowd pleaser. Next up, we're going to my, my new favorite eccentric uh, molecules fragrance, and this is Molecule 4. This is the um, Javanol one, the sandalwood smelling one. And this one, absolute love for this one. People love this one on me. Lots of compliments with this one as well. Just absolutely the, one of the most unique fragrances that I've worn that I didn't smell at first, and now I smell, and it's so strong. It's that kind of a... But it's not a, like a heavy strong, it's a very, very pleasant strong and a total crowd pleaser. People love this one on me. So it's Molecule 4 at number uh, 6. Number 5, we're going to the house of Nishane. This is Hachigat, this one right here. Major compliment getter, major crowd pleaser, non-offensive, strong, long-lasting, freshy. Absolute love for this one. If you don't know it, do check it out. You'll like it. You'll really love it. it. It will remind you of other fragrances that are similar, but this is a unique one on its own. So Hachivat by Nishane at number five. Number four, we're going to the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian. This is Aqua Universalis Forte. Um, this one is really unique, non-offensive, long-lasting, crowd-pleaser, compliment-getter, and I love that it's very clean, almost laundry clean with musk and citruses. Absolutely gorgeous, long-lasting if I didn't say that and people tend to love this one on me. It smells great. So if you don't know Aqua Universalis Forte, you've got to check it out. If you like strong, long-lasting, clean freshies, that's at number four. Number three, we're going to the house of Chanel. This is Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum, EDP. Absolute love for this one. It smells great. People love it. The crowd, uh, just a crowd pleaser, just all around love for this one, universally loved. Now you might prefer the EDT version over the EDP version. I prefer the EDP version and I just love wearing it. It's, it's almost like become one of my favorite fragrances to wear if I'm overwhelmed with fragrances. So Chanel, Bleu de Chanel EDP at number three. At number two, we're going to the house of Roger Parfum. This is Elysium. Um, this is a fougere, very, very modern fougere. Uh, it hints at other fragrances here on this list. It's, it's a bit uh, spicy. It's a bit uh, metallic, it's a bit, uh, um, what do you call it, herbal. So it's kind of like a modern, you know, fougere updated to today's uh, standards, but very, very unique and very long lasting. If you don't know Elysium, you've got to check it out. It's probably become one of his most popular releases, uh, Roja Parfum's releases. Do check it out, Elysium at number two. And my number one crowd pleaser is... Creed Aventus. Yes, I just picked up this bottle and you saw the review and I had to add this here. This is my how many of bottles I've had, but I've bought the big, uh, more flacon -y kind of bottles. Now I have an actual spray bottle that I can carry around with me. But an absolute love for this one. The older I get, the more I get involved in fragrances, the more I love Creed Aventus. It's, there's a reason why people love it because it's totally a crowd pleaser, non-offensive compliment getter. And that's perfectly at number one, Creed Aventus. So guys, do you like this list? Do you like the fragrances on this list? Do you have any of these fragrances? Have you tried them? Which of them sounds the best to you or stands out to you that you want to try that you haven't tried yet? Let me know 
Also, let me know what are your favorite crowd pleasers? What fragrances get you compliments? Let's get a conversation started. Also, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>